Hey friends, welcome back to the farm. We are going to work out in the shop today. We're going to be making a bulk chicken feeder. And we need to make one that the chickens can't waste the feed from. So stick around and we'll get that done. Now we've built one of these before. We had one at our previous house that we actually left there because moving halfway across the United States, we had to downsize and get rid of some stuff. And I've since made a smaller one when the chickens first came out into the chicken coop. But uh, now Kelly wants a, a larger bulk bin that she can use with uh, more access for the chickens on it as well. So we're gonna put this together. So she's got a 30-gallon uh, metal trash can. We have the lid for it as well. And then we're going to be making ports in the side that the chickens can get out, uh, get in there and get the feed. So what we've got are these street elbows. Uh, they're PVC. And the reason you need a street elbow is you're going to use this side to secure it into the container. And we'll show you how to do that. But to start off with, we're going to cut this bell off of the other end. We're going to go over on the bandsaw and saw this off right here because we don't need that. Five more to go. So we got all of our pieces cut. Now the piece that we cut off of this side, these elbows, the street L has a male end on one end and a female in the other on the other side. That's why they call it a street L because it's an opposite. So you take the female end that you cut off of this side. And that is going to be the coupler you use uh, to fasten this connector in the hole. So we're just taking it from this side and using it on this side. And then our garbage can fits in this slot right here after we cut a hole in the garbage can. Now if you can't find street L's but you can find uh, the ones with the mail end, just get you a coupler and then cut a piece off of your coupler that you can use for this piece here. So now we're going to figure out where to drill our holes on our garbage can. So we want the opening of this elbow to be an inch off the bottom of the garbage can. So that's flush right there. So we're right at about an inch up here. So if we come out to say two inches with that, that puts us an inch off the bottom. And these are uh, two inch couplers, uh, two inch PVC is the size, which means the overall size is gonna be two and a half because of the quarter wall. So you can see that we're two inches here, so another inch and a quarter would be three and a quarter. So three and a quarter on center from the bottom of the garbage can is where we wanna drill our hole. And our hole saw has a pilot bit in the middle so we would put that bit on three and a half uh, mark from the bottom. However, there's an inch lip down here on the bottom of the can. The bottom of this can on the inside is right here. So we have to add another inch for that. So our total from this bottom piece here will be four and a quarter to the center of that hole. Now what we've already done yesterday where the bottom meets the sides, there's a crack or a gap um, where the, the formed bottom meets the side. There was kind of a, about a quarter inch deep crack all the way around. So to keep feed from getting down in there and, and rusting and, and uh, getting all nasty down in those corners, we silicone the inside of this thing and fill that crack up. So there's not going to be feed stuck down in that crack. 
So we're going to get our measurements. We'll determine we got six of these going in. So we'll determine what the spacing is on all of these elbows. So we've measured around um, four and a quarter ends up right in the middle of this groove right here. And four and a quarter is where we want to be from the bottom. So we want to measure the diameter of the container, which is this side to this side, right at that increment, which we came out to 18 and a quarter. Now you want to take 18 and a quarter and turn that into decimals so we could do the math. And if you don't know how to convert fractions to decimals, uh, you can get one of these charts right here. Now the easiest way I found in the past is a quarter is what? 25 cents, right? So 0.25 is the decimal equivalent of a quarter. Three quarters would be 75 cents, right? So 0.75 would be the decimal equivalent of three quarters of an inch. So it's that easy. So we have 18 and a quarter inches across at that point. So you want to take that diameter and times it by pi, which is 3.14. And you come out with 57.305, which is the circumference all the way around at that point. So we got six elbows going in. So we want to take the 57.305 and we want to divide that by six. And that comes out to 9.55 inches. So on center between every elbow where we drill a hole will be 9.55 inches. And if you want to convert that back into um, fractions of an inch from 9.55, uh, 9 is your inches, 0.55 would be your fraction of an inch. That comes out real close to 9 sixteenths and that will be close enough. If you're a sixteenth off here and there, obviously we're not building a clock and that don't matter. So we're gonna start drilling these holes. Now when you're making these marks, make it easy on yourself and get a flexible tape measure. I just use my, my 50 foot tape that's flexible. Or you could use the tape measure that ladies use to measure their, like their dress sizes and stuff for sewing. Your grandma probably had one or your mom had one and then uh, just use that. It makes life much easier. Now this tape measure is only measures to eighth of an inch. So sixteenths aren't marked on here. So sixteenths, uh, nine sixteenths is one small line over a half an inch. So nine sixteenths is right in between middle and five eighths right there. So if you're not familiar with fractions on your tape, it's always part of a whole. So if you're counting sixteenths, sixteen sixteenths would be a full one inch, correct? So half of sixteen is eight. So eight sixteenths, which we would never say eight sixteenths, it would always be half an inch, but eight sixteenths is a half. So if you know eight sixteenths is a half, you know nine sixteenths is one line above half, right? That's the easiest way to remember. Now quarters is easy because you got one quarter, half, three quarter, one. So four fourths or four quarters is one inch, correct? Yes. So sixteenths, eighths, and all that is the same way. So say you're doing eighths. Eight eighths is full one inch, so four eighths would be a half, right? So if you know four eighths is a half, you know three eighths is just right there below half on this tape right here. So easy to remember if you can... Uh, Remember that whatever your bottom number is on the fraction is the part of the whole. So whether you're doing tenths or twentieths or whatever, say ten twentieths, that would be a half, right? That's all there is to fractions, and I learned fractions in woodshop in high school using a measuring tape. Just like I said before, I correlated decimal equivalents to money. So say one inch would consider that a dollar, one inch. So 0 0.50 or 50 cents is half, right? Uh, point three zero is 30 cents, which would be just below three eighths, whatever. Point seven five is th three quarters or 75 cents. Just that's the easiest way to do decimal.
we got the holes cut and uh, I just did a test fit of all the elbows uh, threw them in there and make sure that everything was going to fit right. Now Kelly wanted one higher one for our rooster cat. He's a lot taller than the other chickens so he won't have a hard time getting in these lower holes here like the hens will be fine. But you can see uh, the chicken will stick its head in that hole and get feed but it will be unable to drag the feed out on the ground. If you've never had chickens the chickens will use their head and their beak to rake food out of the feeder like there's some miracle feed behind that that they're trying to get at. And out at our last residence, I filled up one of Kelly's chicken feeders one day because it was almost empty. And I came out about an hour later to do something else and the chickens already had three quarters of the feeder down. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're eating a lot of feed. But upon further inspection, they were raking it all out on the ground. So after we made uh, our no waste chicken feeder out there, she saved probably three quarters of the feed because I would say three quarters of it was going out on the ground and they were only eating a quarter of it out of the feeder. And yeah, if you starve them out for a little bit, they'll dig around on the ground and maybe eventually eat that stuff. But we like them to eat nice clean feed out of the feeder and not be digging around on the ground. Now there's a view of the inside of the feeder. Now, those elbows, the ends of them are about an inch off of the bottom, and the feed will fall in beside it, and the chickens will be able to get the feed inside there, but it's not going to allow a big bunch of feed that they can rake out. Now, if you ever think that you, maybe the chickens can't reach or you want to make a little more feed in there, all you got to do is just maybe cut the end off of these elbows, and then more feed will fall into that little area. But uh, this is even taller than I had the one at our last house, so I'm sure they'll be able to get in there just fine. Now, I know some of you are thinking right away that there's feed in the middle that chickens aren't going to be able to get to, and that is true. But when Kelly refills the feeder, she just sticks her hands down in there and swirls all that feed to the outside where they can get at that feed and it doesn't get old, and then dumps the new stuff in on top. So originally I was going to glue these... Uh, I don't want to, they're not couplers, collars, I, we'll call them. I was going to glue these collars on, but a slip joint fits nice and snug, especially if you have the full width of the slip joint. So I just took my dead blow hammer, or you could use a rubber mallet or something like that, and I held the inside of the elbow, and then I tapped on the outside with this, snugging that collar up. And you can see they don't even turn in the hole, they're that snug. But what I am going to do is to make it watertight i'm going to come around the outside here with a little bead of silicone just uh because this is going to be out in the outer area of the chicken run if it rains i don't want water getting into that feed in the bottom and i think with you can see that they're angled because the outside of the can is tapered the rain is just going to run off it's not going to run inside because of that little bit of an angle on the outside of that collar. So we're going to take a little file now and I'm going to see if there's any sharp edges that I need to file off so our chickens don't get cut up here. And then we'll be done. Now a good hack when you're applying your silicone, put a bead around there, put you on a, a latex or a nitrile glove, and then just use your finger and run your finger around the edge and it'll smooth that edge out to where you get a good nice seal around there making sure you get plenty in those corners that are a little deeper and it's not going to look you know beautiful but it's going to be a nice seal around that okay we got it all done everything's all siliconed up tight ready to go got the lid on it be all ready for Kelly tomorrow to use we could put a whole 50 pound bag of feed in here probably plus some but I doubt if she'll do more than one bag but uh, I got cats uh, feeder port labeled so he doesn't have to uh, have com competition eating out of his slot let's go out and show you just how big cat got there's a big cat right there big monster bird compared to the hens now Hershey's pretty good size too there's Hershey chocolate Orpington cat 
and kit are lavender orpington. And then the gold colored chickens out here, the solid ones are the buff orpingtons. And then we have the Americanas right there and right there. Now Blondie is an, also an Americana, but she's a lot lighter than the other Americanas. And even these, see this one's lighter than that one. But so far we've only seen ro one rooster here and that's that's Cat. And his crow's getting really good. But he's a monster. You can hear him when he jumps out of the coop. He like thump when he hits the ground. But you can't call these babies anymore. The big old pretty chickens now. They've been losing a lot of their baby feathers, so we gotta rake up a lot of this feather mess out here. But that's the update on the baby girls. Well, big girls now. But uh, cats getting beautiful, getting them long tail feathers. But a big old monster rooster. All right, folks, that's going to be a wrap for today. Hope you've enjoyed our video on making our bulk uh, no waste chicken feeder. It's going to work really nice. So if you got any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. Uh, I try to answer just about every question that people put down there. So uh, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Also, I was looking on the analytics the other day. 85% of the people that view our videos here at Mark Kelly Farm are not subscribers. So if y'all would subscribe, we could get out to a lot more people because that's the way the algorithm works. The more subscribes and likes and shares that you get, the more they show your video. It just doesn't go out there for everybody to see. It's the way that algorithm works. But uh, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, we do have the the cake tour going on, so stay tuned for that. We've already done one cake, and I think we're going to do another one today that you'll see that video probably next. So love you guys. Catch you on the next one.